What is going on everyone and welcome back to another video on the channel and today I'll be going through my round 13 AFL tips and predictions as well as going through my round 12 tips and predictions and big call. So as usual I'm going to go through my tips to see what I got last week as well as the big calls. Um, so the first game between Melbourne and Brisbane, Friday night footy. Got this one incorrect. I tipped the Lions, um, but the, the Demons, they, they got the better of the Lions in that second half. Won the game by 22 points. Uh, Sydney v St Kilda, I tipped Sydney. Adelaide v Collingwood, I got that one incorrect. Pies won. Now this next one annoys me. On ESPN tipping, I accidentally tipped Eston to win. But in the video, I tipped Richmond. So I don't know, you know what, screw it. I'll just give myself an incorrect one there, even though I did tip Richmond and I thought they were gonna win. So that, that's annoying. I guess it makes up for when I tipped Adelaide over Melbourne. And then I got the next two correct. I tipped West Coast beat Carlton and Bulldogs beat Frio. So it depends on what you want to say, but I, I got three or four. You could really argue for any. So that's a bit annoying. And quickly, I'll go through the big calls. So in the Melbourne-Brisbane game, I predicted it to be four or less goals scored in the last quarter. And there were five goals. So I caught that one very, uh, very close, but incorrect. Sydney v St Kilda, I predicted that the Swans kick five or more goals at any stage of the game. And they kick four at the most. So I, I sort of wanted them just to kick that extra goal so I'd get that big call correct. Adelaide Collingwood, I predicted Fogarty and Walker to combine for seven or more goals. And of course, Walker kicked two goals, six. So for all three of them, I could have got it correct, but there's something stupid has had to have happened. SNV Richmond, I predicted for both teams to score over 100 points. And I was sort of close. Essendon scored 84. In Carlton v West Coast, I predicted Carlton to uh, be in front at half time and lose. And at half time, they were about nine, but they really should have been in front, honestly. And then in Frio v Western Bulldogs, I predicted Walters to kick four more goals, and he only kicked one. I think he kicked one goal three, so yet again, he could have actually kicked four. So again, I got zero out of six, and I, I needed to get two or more to avoid the big call. And I know exactly what the big call is. I'll quickly go back on top to the video. It just, it actually just ended up winning, but again, it was Geordie Pluto with 124 likes this time, and the punishment was. Watch a whole season of Thomas and Friends on stream. Now, I, I looked it up. Some seasons go for 24 hours, so there's no way in hell I'm doing that. I'm gonna change it to watching Thomas and Friends for two hours on stream, and I'm probably most likely gonna stream it on my second account. I'll, I'll put my uh, second channel in the description, the pinned comment, so yeah. Tune out for that, and I'll, I'll do it throughout the week, that's for sure. Um, and quickly, I'll go through my tipping comp before we actually get into the tips. And because of that stupid mistake with the Richmond game, I'm now 34th, which is frustrating. And uh, Geordie Sko on 80 points is leading the tipping comp. Um, so congratulations. But I'm on, I'm on 34 now. I'm on 75. I should have been on 76, but that's annoying. But anyways, let's get straight into the next round of footy. And we got round 13. And we'll go through the round 13 tips. So the first game, we have Port taking on Geelong. At Adelaide Oval, both teams had a bye the week before, but in the uh, the weeks prior, the Cats had a very unconvincing win over the Pies and a, a terrible affair. Not going to lie, nothing convincing really from the Cats in that one. And Port Adelaide um, were pretty good against Frio. They got the game done uh, at quarter time, um, so they dominated the game. They looked pretty good, um, but it wasn't the most convincing win because they were playing a Frio side that just kept kicking points. So this game, both sides aren't in their best aren't in best form, and it's gonna be hard really to see if these sides, which one can make the top four. I think if we're gonna take home ground advantage into the equation, and just based off Geelong's recent form, they just haven't really been too convincing. Um, I really think that uh, Port should win this. And uh, last year, they did win um, against Geelong in the prelim, in the qualifying final. So it makes me definitely lean on to the power here. I think the power should really win this. So I will pick Port Adelaide to win this game by 18 points. And my big call, Charlie Dixon kicks four or more goals. He uh, has been kicking really, he has been very average um, against the uh, top eight side, Dixon, this year. He just can't seem to kick goals. So this is finally the game. He stands up against the top eight side and actually kicks some goals. And next game, Friday night footy, we've got Sydney taking on Hawthorne. Now, I really don't know why these two sides are playing on Friday night, particularly the Hawks, but... For whatever reason, these two sides generally uh, bring out a good contest, regardless of where they're on the ladder. Um, Sydney last week weren't too great. I mean, they were a bit unlucky, especially considering that the, free, the umpires were, I'd have to agree, on the Saints side. But they survived a late scare from the Saints. If anything, the Saints just did everything they could to, to lose the game. And then Hawthorne 
well, you know, they're, they're losing by six goals against Gold Coast. So that just goes to show where they're at. Um, and it, I don't think they're really going to... I don't know if there's anyone else really coming back for the Hawks. So there's not much really we can say about the Hawks. Um, the odds say it all. $1.48 to $5.75. Um, you'd be... You'd be crazy if you want to go the Hawks in this game. I think the Swans should get the job done. It won't be the biggest smashing, but it will be a 28-point win to the Swans. And the Swans will kick the first three goals of the game as my big call. Uh, we move on to Saturday afternoon footy. We've got the 4-15 clash between Fremantle and Gold Coast at Optus Stadium. Uh, Frio were just rattled with injuries against the Dogs last week. I didn't really watch the game, but apparently they end up with five to six injuries. Like, that is the worst injury luck you could ever hope for. And, uh, yeah, it was just unlucky for them. Uh, as usual, they were inaccurate, but so were the dogs. But it was just very in unlucky. And I don't think uh, it was their fault, really, that they, they lost that game. I think if they had a full side, they, you know, potentially could have actually won that game at the end. But a uh, bit unlucky for the Dockers, but that just sums up, really, their season so far. And the Suns, well, if they... Beat Hawthorne, as I said before, in the week prior, which is pretty good for them. But it is Hawthorne, um, so I don't really know where the Suns are at. I still see them as a team that will probably finish in the bottom four or five. Um, at Optus, though, Frio, if they don't win this, that's, there are some problems for the Dockers. You just have to beat the Suns if you're at home. So Frio should win this game, and they'll win it quite comfortably by 30 points with my big call. More than 25 behinds are scored in the entire game for both sides. And the next game, we've got St Kilda taking on Adelaide at Kazali Stadium in Cairns. Um, I, yeah, I was never going to go to this game, and I definitely aren't now. I might probably stream it, actually. But, um, yeah, this is going to be a very interesting one. I reckon this could be the closest game to, to tip, honestly. I mean, the Saints, uh, they almost beat the Swans. They were actually quite impressive in some aspects. I know Higgins kicked the one goal six, but he was still really good, just aside from his goal kicking. And Adelaide, well... Um, you know, they yeah, they lost to the Pies, but probably should have won based on that goal kicking. Walker kicked two goals, six. Um, and yeah, Elliot kicked six straight. So that just goes to show that if you're kicking accurately, uh, you, you're probably going to win games. So uh, this is a, a tough one to pick. At a neutral venue as well, um, you know, I don't think any of these sides have actually played up at Kazali Stadium. Maybe even Adelaide might have played there last year. So if anything, they might have the advantage. But... Now, the Saints uh, have a couple of uh, big losses. In fact, they've got Membry, Seb Ross, um, Geary, and then also Mason Wood, who I think will all be out for next week's clash. So, yeah, it's it's not looking good for the Saints, honestly, on the injury front. And I don't really know where we're going to find our goals next week. Our, our forward line's going to be screwed. If, uh, if Max King's playing, which I'm pretty sure she is, he's got to have a, a big game, I swear to God. Um, yeah, I honestly could see Adelaide winning. But as a Saints fan, I'll go towards the Saints. I think... We can get up. Um, I don't think finals are any chance anymore, so it's not anything to, to do with finals. But I'll go the Saints to win this game by um, two points in a thriller with my big call that the Saints come back and win from three-quarter time. We move on to the Sunday games. And the first game between North Melbourne and GWS. Uh, the two teams had a bye the week prior, but North did play the Saints two weeks ago in which they, well, they showed a lot in that last quarter. They only ended up losing by 20, but... Still, their, their skills for the most part were pretty shocking and it, it just goes to show how far off they are from the top. And GWS as well goes to show how far that, how far off they are from the top. They are not a bad side this year, but the, the Lions just taught them a valuable lesson really. So this one will be a an interesting game, that is for sure. But I think even though it is at Blundstone, the Giants have to win this. It'll be pretty shocking if they don't. But I could see the, the Roos potentially upsetting in this one. So I think this might be a close one. I'll go GWS by 15. And my big call will be that the combined score will be less than 145. And the next game, we've got West Coast v Richmond at Optus Stadium at 7.20. Um, which is surprising, but at the same time, it's actually the Queen's birthday game next. I forgot about that. So yeah, West Coast v Richmond. This will be an interesting one. I mean, West Coast, they beat the, the Blues with a VFL side. They, they literally had all their big names out. They even had Shepard out beforehand. They had Ryan, uh, Shuey was out, uh, Kennedy was out, Kelly, Allen, all these players. Like, there are they're probably more, honestly. They had, like, half their good players out. And Carlton barely had any excuses, honestly. Plus, they were playing at the SCG that the Eagles haven't won there since 1999. And the, the Blues just managed to fail yet again and lose by 22. So... Yeah, a great win for the Eagles because honestly, I was like, yeah, why did I tip the, why did I tip them? 
but that's why they actually ended up winning. They stood up tall. Uh, Richmond, at the same time, they stood up tall. They were, for, like, I didn't watch much of this Dreamtime game. From what I see, I watched the last quarter. The, the Tigers just had control of the match, honestly, until three-quarter time. The, and then the game just took a toll. And the Bombers just kicked three or four quick ones to put themselves back in front. And then Richmond kicked seven goals in 14 minutes to win the game by 39 points. Um, but, uh, yeah, Parrish was massive in that game. He had 44 touches. He won the medal. Um, Martin also had three goals and 27 touches. So, a tight one. Honestly, if Richmond can find, you know, if they're finding their form back this year, I reckon Richmond actually should win this regardless of the, uh, the stadium because we all know Essendon beat West Coast there. And West Coast, I don't really know who's coming back for them, but I doubt too many players will be, if any. So, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to keep Richmond in this game. It might be an upset, uh, but Richmond by 11. My big call will be that there'll be six or more lead changes throughout the game. And the last game, which is the Queen's birthday clash, the, the freeze, the big freeze, which will have to be the SCG. So, I guess technically, it's still the big freeze at the G, just the wrong G. Um, we've got Melbourne taking on Collingwood. Melbourne last week we were just so impressive. They just keep getting the job done against the best. They keep beating the benchmark, and now they are the benchmark. They've got to be Premiership favourites now. Uh, Melbourne beat the Lions by 22. Well, it was a, a really tight contest, honestly, up until three quarter time. The, the Lions were better uh, up until half time, but then the D's just took it around the last quarter. Nine goals to three in that last quarter. So it just goes to show how good they have been this year, the Ds. And Collingwood, well, they got the job done last week. They finally got a win. I didn't see it coming, honestly, but they won against all odds, really. They played away um, at the Adelaide Oval. They had a very tough trip in getting there with all the COVID stuff. So, you know, good on the Pies. They got the job done. Elliot was monumental, the six goals. Um, and Bianco and Polter as well. They were um, some impressive youngsters in that game when I was watching it. So this, could maybe be closer than what people are imagining, but I, I, if Melbourne lose this, um, I'll be shocked. They are that much of a better side than Collingwood. They play that much of a better game. Um, Collingwood will have their biggest loss of the season so far. Melbourne by 36 points, and Clayton Oliver will have 35 or more touches as my big call. So there you go. Those were my round 13 AFL tips and predictions. Um, there were seven games this week. The, the West Coast Richmond game got moved back for whatever reason, so seven games instead of six. And the Thursday night games are back, which is a good thing to see. Because there are seven games, I'm going to give myself the benefit of the doubt and still only require two big calls to be done of the seven rounds. So I just need to get two big calls correct of seven games um, for me not to do a punishment. So comment down below your punishments. Most appropriate one with the most likes I'll eventually have to do. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. We are getting close to 10,000 subscribers and there'll be a giveaway once I reach that milestone. Uh, if you want to join the tipping comp, uh, you can search up Cardman22's tipping comp on ESPN Tipping. I'm going to close it soon, like in a few weeks. So just, if you want to get in, get in quick. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, but there, that's all really I've got to say. Hopefully you guys did enjoy the video. Hopefully I can get a little bit better than three. I should have got four, but hopefully I can get maybe five or six in this round. And I'll see you guys very soon in my next video.